Hi, Dr. Paul Heater here. You know, sometimes a lot of stuff happens to us in our lives. And, you know, we just a while back talking to a man and he lost everybody in his life and in a very short amount of time. And I've known a lot of people that that's happened to. Um, it seems like, you know, everything comes at once, but we're being put through challenges. There's no doubt about that. And there's a lot of stuff that we have to go through. We have to do the grieving process, you know, and he happened to go to uh, uh, see a psychiatrist and all they did was give him <laughs> a whole bunch of drugs and say, here, take these and uh, deal with it, you know. And so he's really feeling uneasy, t feeling terrible inside, locked in his uh, his house and not feeling good. And, you know, that doesn't take care of what's going on inside. We got to allow ourselves to let all those feelings out. <laughs> those feelings are in there for a reason, you know what I mean? And they are supposed to be expressed. It's kind of like water moving, you know what I mean? When we dam it up and you get that pressure going, you know what I mean? The, the anxiety is the pressure. And we need to allow that to flow. And if we don't allow that to flow, it causes problems actually has physical manifestations that come out and we get sick or we ended up, you know, really uh, feeling down and going crazy and uh, that doesn't help either. So we really need to allow the emotional impact that we've had to flow. And there's different uh, parts of it and I'm not going to get into all of them. You know, part of it is the, the sadness and the anger and on and on. And so we have to flow through all that, you know. We we do get angry at the person. Well, you know, why'd you die for, you know? That's absolutely, positively. I, I remember that with my uh, my dad. Why'd you die? My, died at, my dad died at 57, early, you know. And so I was wondering, why did you do that? Why'd you leave me, you know? And so we have to allow ourselves to go through that stage and also to forgive, forget and move on. He didn't do it on purpose, and nobody does it on purpose, you know, and sometimes we meet, we lose the best friend. Our best friend and our best friend is there one moment and the next moment is gone. Sometimes people get into a car accident and uh, we have no way of saying goodbye or anything, and so we have a lot of pent-up stuff that we need to deal with. So we really need to go and talk it all out. And it's, to go to a psychologist or go to a great friend and allow ourselves to let all this come out. And that's absolutely super important. Plus, we can't allow ourselves to take, you know, forever to grieve. We have to have put a time limit on it. I know a particular person that lost her daughter that she grieved for 20 years. Now, she ended up with two cancer twice and to beat it the first time and didn't beat it the second time. So we really need to put it, you know, I'm going to grieve for uh, a month, you know, two months, three months, and then allow ourselves to, you know, allow ourselves to go through that process and allow ourselves to heal. And we do need to heal. And we have to get out of the house. There's absolutely <laughs> positively important. We got to get out of the house. We need to allow ourselves, maybe give us our 10 days to be locked in the house at the most, but then we got to go back into the real world. And I was talking to this particular person and uh, he, he went back to work and that made him feel better because, you know, being locked in the house by himself, that wasn't helping anything. All we do is, uh, you know, ferment over all this stuff that's going on inside. And so we need to allow that to come out. And then if all of a sudden we need to burst into tears, people will understand because we have had a loss. So allow it to come out. And to go out in nature and be out in nature, and the nature is super healing for the emotions. And that's a great place to let our feelings out. And sometimes we need to get angry and yell and scream, and that's a great place to do that too. Uh, and we can allow all that to come out and feel a deeper sense of peace. I also recommend learning meditation, whether it be TM or Vipassana. 
Uh, either one will calm the mind, body, uh, parts of us, calm our anxiety, calm down all of the feelings that we have, not get rid of them, but we still have to express them, but it will help us to find deep inner peace in a better way. And so that is very important also. And to go back to our daily routine, it's really important. You know, some people never do. And so they stay caught in this cycle, which never ends. And so it's really important to go back to our, our routine as soon as we feel it's right. And uh, allow ourselves to get out with friends. Also, to this particular person, there's hardly anybody in this tiny little town. So he, he's going to have to drive somewhere and join clubs, maybe a chess club, maybe a, a bowling club, or maybe a, a yachting club or something like that. Whatever it takes to find new people, especially if we lost everybody in our lives. You know what I mean? There's no close people in our life anymore. Maybe our mother and father passed, or brother passed, or you know, sister passed, or whatever, and there's nobody else. So we need, really need to have re socializing relationships, close friends that we can talk to, and then to build those. And a lot of people don't know how to do that because they've had family around them all their lives. But it's really important to get outside of our box and uh, allow ourselves to find people. There are great people out there. There's no doubt about it. I have great friends that I talk with all the time. And if we allow ourselves to do that, break out of our box, we start to feel better. Yeah, but if we stay stuck in our box, you know, if we stay stuck in the apartment, stuck in the house, we you know, a lot of times never heal. And it's important that we allow ourselves to move to the next stage and allow ourselves to break free of the conflict inside of us. Also, you know, we have to get to that place of forgiveness, you know, for ourselves. You know, sometimes we feel bad. I wasn't there when he passed. or I wasn't there to help him when this happened. If I would have driven him to the hospital, he, this wouldn't have happened, and all these different things. And, and sometimes it doesn't even make sense why we're angry with ourselves. And we have to allow ourselves to really forgive ourselves, you know, and let that move on. And also to allow ourselves to have some laughter in our lives, you know, and rent hilarious movies and laugh with them, with belly laughs, and that's very healing. Even Norman Cousins talks about the healing of his own cancer with, you know, watching old funny movies. And I think it's really important. And laughter allows the anxiety to disappear. Laughter allows the, the sense of tension that goes with that to disappear. We, laughter allows the, the anxiety that we have to disappear. And then on and on and on. And then so... We're actually massaging the organs inside. We're actually soothing the vibration that we have going on in our outer body. Uh, so this starts to heal also. And also to go and talk with somebody. That's really important. You know, like I said, to talk with a psychologist, that's what they get paid for. You know, before there were psychologists, they were just close friends. <laughs> And we went and we talked with our friends and we let everything out. Uh, but somehow, this day and age, you know, we're stuck in computer land or stuck on our phones and we don't really get to connected with people. And so, so we don't have any close friends. And boy, that's not good. We really got to get out and make connections with people. Uh, maybe you were in high school. Maybe you joined... Uh, you know, the chess club, maybe you joined, uh, you know, the rowing team or something like that. Whatever it takes to get outside of your normal routine and start a new hobby. Start some hobby that is, maybe you always wanted to do some, take some cooking lessons. Maybe it's time to do that. Maybe you have, uh, you know, always wanted to learn to sew. Maybe it's time to do that. Maybe you... You wanted to, you know, learn how to garden. So maybe it's time to do that. You know, gardening is one of the things that's really good for the mind, body, and spirit. 
you know, every time you get out in nature and get your hands dirty in the, in the soil, it really is uh, really good f for everything. Uh, I do a lot of gardening myself, and I have to say, it is a healing. It is a healing. There's no doubt about it. And uh, also going for long, long walks. You know, I do five to seven miles, most of the time seven miles a day of walking. And it's a great time to heal all that stuff that builds up during the, the previous day. And so walking and walking and walking and also saying prayers. And it's a great time also to talk with God, talk with our great spirit, talk with the universe. And let's allow ourselves to find out what is the great plan and ask, you know, why does this happen? And, and listen to that still small voice inside that's going to answer. And it's going to answer. There's no doubt about it. Uh, but are we listening? That is the question. So allow ourselves to, you know, find the answers to all of this. And there is an answer. We've been put through all this one step at a time in order to become an even more powerful, better person. Some of the greatest people down through history lost everybody. And because of that, they decided to go out and help people. I remember one particular person in general, she lost everyone in her family, and she started a soup kitchen. And so she said, I'm not going to, you know, allow their passing to just allow, get me down. I'm going to go out and help other people. And so she started the soup kitchen, and then it grew and grew and grew, and it became a, uh, a multi-city soup kitchen. So uh, I'm, I'm pretty amazed at that. Some people will take it, the bull by the horns and move forward with that and say, you know, I'm not going to allow myself to get way down. I'm going to do something that changes the world in a positive way and let their memories be expressed that way. Allow my... Allow my you know, loved ones to be expressed to what I do in a positive way. And that is a great way to heal. That's absolutely. And uh, to get out and go to work in a soup kitchen or go out and uh, help in a uh, food pantry or, uh, any, or meals on wheels or anything like that, that is a great way to be. And you're around people. And it's really important that we have our time alone, of course, so we can feel and let our feelings out. But it's not good to be alone all the time. Absolutely not good to be alone all the time. And it's good to have a job. You know, I know people who just work one day a week and they feel better when they go to work. Uh, well, that's... <laughs> Life is telling you, you got to go to work a little more often. <laughs> they don't have to work. You know, maybe they have a subsistence level of, you know, Social Security or something coming in, but they don't have to work, but they feel better when they go to work. And so I've had that come up many times. So I say, well, you need to make a few more days of working so that you have a balance here. You know, being stuck in the house is not good. And so that's really important. You know, get out with nature. Make it a a change that maybe you join Sierra Club, maybe you join the, some outdoor activity uh, group in your area, and maybe you'll become a guide eventually. And so that makes a difference in helping other people. Uh, it's really important. It's also important to have pets. You know, I, mean, I love our dogs. It's absolutely one of the most important things in our our family life here. We have two little dogs. Uh, a blonde and uh, a, a black dog, and they always make me feel good. And being around pets is amazing. And uh, and they are family. You know what I mean? They are family, absolutely. And for me, uh, to, I have to get up and take care of the dogs and feed them. I feed them every morning, every night, and uh, uh, we go for walks and. Uh, uh, you know, taking them to the groomers and going to the vets and get checked up and all these different things. And that's, you know, it makes you feel needed and wanted. And they really appreciate it. You know, they give me lots of kisses, all kinds of licks on the face. <laughs> that's their way of kissing, you know. 
And so it's really important to have pets. Even as we get older, pets are really more important because, you know, we may not have as many people in our life, but uh, every day that dog is going to come up and love you no matter what. And uh, that is unconditional love. And I uh, highly recommend it. If you uh, can't afford it, if you can, go out and find a dog uh, who needs a home is a great way to heal. And help, uh, help an animal is helping yourself. And you will start that healing process of allowing yourself to grow and change and become a better person by taking care of an animal. Or sometimes people want to, you know, get an animal and help the, that animal and then pass it on to somebody else. And that's a great big heart there, I have to say. Uh, and I, one of our daughters is the head of the SPCA here. And uh, she does a great job. And it's not easy when you don't have a lot of money, too. And they do, they work with thousands and thousands of dogs every year. So the animals are a wonderful way to heal. And so find a pet for you and move forward in life and allow yourself to grow and change and become that person that those, those who passed would like you to see, like you to be the true person you really are deep down inside. And you can do this. Allow yourself to have your time to grieve. At the same time, it's time to move forward. It's time to make another change. It's time to move down your path even further. And I know you can do it. And I'll be praying for you every step of the way. Also, if you care to subscribe, you know, you can click on uh, that below. If you want to get a hold of me, feel free to. My phone number, email, and uh, Skype address is there. And uh, all my consultations are always free. And so feel free to contact me. And I go to bed early. <laughs> I'll say this again. I'm on Eastern Standard Time, and I go to bed at 8 p.m. So contact me early, and I will get back to you if you live in the States. Or email me if you're outside the United States, and I'll also get back to you. And uh, I'm always here for you in any way, shape, or form. And so also if you care to make a donation, that's really, really greatly appreciated. So have a wonderful, wonderful day. And most of all, remember, I love you.